Good evening, dear listeners. Welcome to our scary stories. Every shadow hides a secret, and every whisper carries a tale. Tonight, we invite you into the hallowed halls of a haunted gallery, where art isn't just a reflection of life, but possibly death. Close your eyes, breathe deep, and let your imagination paint the picture. Now, let's begin. Victor Mason stood on the grand marble floor of the Alden Auction House, its regal walls adorned with antique paintings and artifacts that told tales of centuries gone by. The dim overhead chandeliers cast golden hues, making the ornate woodwork glint in mysterious allure. A sweet scent of aged paper and polish lingered in the air, capturing the room's timeless essence. A muffled hum of gathered artificial autos filled the room, their gentle whispers creating an almost reverential ambience. As Victor's eyes roamed the opulent space, they settled on a peculiar painting draped in a rich crimson veil. The auctioneer, a stout man with white hair neatly combed back, cleared his throat, garnering the room's attention. Ladies and gentlemen, he began, his voice echoing with authority. Our next item is unique and has come from the furthest corners of Eastern Europe. With dramatic flair, he pulled away the cloth, revealing an intricate painting of a grotesque creature. Its eyes, although painted, seemed almost alive, deep and searching. The creature, with gnarled fingers and a twisted form, was set against a dull, nondescript background, making its presence even more jarring. Murmurs filled the room, a mix of intrigue and subtle unease. To Victor's side, a woman in an elegant blue gown whispered to her companion, It's almost as if its eyes follow you. Victor felt a pull, an uncanny allure drawing him closer to the painting. He could hear the faintest sound, almost like a whispered sigh, coming from the canvas. The air around him grew colder. Shall we start the bidding at 5,000 pounds? The auctioneer's voice snapped Victor back to the present. Bids began flying, but Victor's hand shot up again and again, his determination unwavering. In the back, an old man with weathered skin and piercing gray eyes watched intently. He seemed neither surprised nor interested in bidding, but there was a hint of satisfaction as he observed Victor's persistence. Sold to Mr. Victor Mason for 15,000 pounds, the gavel sounded its final judgment. As Victor approached to finalize his purchase, the old man gracefully made his way over. Mr. Mason, he greeted in a voice roughened by time, I hope you know what you've acquired. Victor, still entranced by the canvas, replied, It's an exquisite piece. Its history must be fascinating. The old man leaned in closer, his breath smelling faintly of tobacco. Some things, he whispered, are better left forgotten. Victor, feeling the weight of the man's gaze, met his eyes. There was a depth of knowledge and an unspoken warning there. But before he could inquire further, the man had already blended into the dispersing crowd. That evening, as Victor's footsteps echoed through the halls of his gallery, the mysterious canvas in tow, a chilling wind blew through, causing the lights to flicker briefly. Unbeknownst to him, a new chapter had just begun, a chapter that would challenge the boundaries of reality and the depths of his own beliefs. Victor's gallery, known as the Mason Atrium, was renowned throughout the city, a paragon of artistic elegance and grandeur. High ceilings with arched windows allowed the sun's rays to pour in casting ethereal reflections off polished wooden floors. The gentle aroma of freshly bloomed lilies from the garden outside wafted through the air, a delightful juxtaposition to the aged scent of antique artwork. Every piece in the gallery told a story, and now the mysterious canvas was about to tell its own. As Victor unveiled the new addition, the hushed tones of visitors and critics filled the expansive room. The painting's grotesque creature seemed even more haunting under the gallery's lights. It stood stark against the clean white wall, drawing onlookers towards it like moths to a flame. Its unsettling eyes appeared even more alive, darting and gauging the psyche of anyone daring to look. A tall woman with raven black hair, dressed in a sharp tailored suit, stepped forward, her heels clicking softly against the floor. She introduced herself as Lydia, an art historian with a passion for unique and ancient pieces. Mr. Mason, Lydia began, her voice soft yet commanding. This is unlike any artwork I've ever encountered. Its aura is almost tangible. May I inquire about its origins? Victor, intrigued by Lydia's keen interest, shared the little he knew. As their conversation deepened, other visitors began sharing their own impressions. A young couple, Adrian and Claire, had traveled from a neighboring town after hearing rumors of the enigmatic painting. It's unsettling, Adrian muttered, pulling Claire close. It feels as though it's peering right into my soul. 
Claire, her eyes wide with a mixture of fascination and fear, nodded. It's as if it knows us. As afternoon transitioned to evening, the gallery began to empty, but the whispers about the painting lingered. Lydia, ever the inquisitive historian, decided to remain behind, her thirst for understanding growing with each passing moment. Victor, she said, her tone earnest, I believe there's more to this painting than meets the eye. If you allow, I'd like to research its background. Its impact on the viewers is undeniable, and I fear it holds secrets we're yet to uncover. Victor, both curious and concerned, agreed. As the final visitor departed, the gallery's grand doors closed with a resounding thud. Victor and Lydia were left standing in front of the canvas, feeling the weight of its gaze, an unspoken understanding passing between them. The journey into the painting's mystique had truly begun, and they were to be its primary voyagers. Lydia's apartment was an ode to history, tall bookshelves laden with dusty tomes, ancient artifacts on display, and walls lined with photographs from bygone eras. Her love for the past was evident in every corner. The dim glow from a solitary desk lamp illuminated the room, casting dancing shadows that seemed to play out tales of their own. Lydia sat at her wooden desk, poring over a myriad of documents and notes. She had a lead on the painting's origins, a mention of it in an old, nearly forgotten book on art from Eastern Europe. Victor sat opposite her, nursing a cup of tea, its steam curling up into the air with a soothing aroma of chamomile and mint. The text revealed that the painting belonged to the estate of a nobleman named Lord Radovan from a remote village in Transylvania. The canvas was rumored to be a representation of a creature that once plagued the village, a demon or spirit that moved between the realms of the living and the ethereal. But the most chilling detail was an old folk tale that accompanied the painting's description. The creature was said to be a manifestation of trapped souls, forever bound to the canvas. Legend spoke of its ability to leave the painting during the witching hour, seeking to add to its collection of tormented spirits. Victor, a skeptic at heart, raised an eyebrow. Legends are often exaggerated tales, Lydia. How can we be certain of its truth? Lydia, while typically grounded in her research, looked unsettled. The way people react to the painting, Victor. Their feelings of unease. It's reminiscent of how artifacts with dark histories impact those around them. Suddenly, there was a soft knock on her apartment door, followed by a hesitant voice. Ms. Lydia, it's Claire from the gallery. Upon opening the door, they found Claire, eyes red-rimmed and face pale. Adrian's gone missing, she whispered, voice quivering. The last time I saw him, he was entranced by that painting. I've searched everywhere, and there's no trace of him. Lydia's heart raced as she recalled the legend. The creature sought to add to its collection of souls, and now Adrian was nowhere to be found. The pieces of the puzzle began to merge, forming a picture more ominous than they could have imagined. Victor, sensing the gravity of the situation, took charge. We must return to the gallery immediately. If there's even a shred of truth to this tale, we need to act swiftly. Together, the trio hurriedly left the apartment, the looming silhouette of the mason atrium beckoning in the distance. Unbeknownst to them, the night was about to unveil secrets that would challenge their understanding of the world as they knew it. The moon, large and luminous, painted the city in a silver hue. Its glow transformed the streets into a network of shimmering pathways, guiding Victor, Lydia, and Claire back to the Mason Atrium. Each step echoed on the cobblestone, a reminder of their isolation in the dead of night. As they approached, the gallery's facade, often a symbol of artistic grandeur, now looked menacing. Its tall, arched windows resembled hollow eyes, gazing down upon them with silent judgment. A cold gust of wind brushed past, carrying with it the haunting fragrances of aged paint and old wood. Victor fumbled with the keys before finally unlocking the grand entrance. The doors creaked open, revealing the vast expanse of the gallery's interior. Faintly lit by the ambient moonlight filtering in, the artwork on display cast eerie shadows that danced and flitted across the walls. Claire, clutching her coat tight against her, whispered, It feels different at night, more alive, like the art is watching us. As they moved towards the section housing the accursed painting, they noticed a change. The creature's background, once an abstract blend of hues, now vividly depicted a dense forest shrouded in mist, a landscape eerily similar to Transylvanian woods. Lydia approached the painting, her historian instincts compelling her to examine it closely. The legend said the creature moves at the witching hour, and with each return by dawn, the painting has a new background. 
Victor interjected, and it's mimicking rooms or places associated with recent guests of the gallery. Could the forest be a connection to Adrian? Suddenly, a voice, deep and hollow, echoed through the gallery. You seek answers where you should not tread. The trio spun around, searching for the source. Before them stood a figure, translucent and ethereal, adorned in noble garb from a bygone era. It was Lord Radovan, the nobleman linked to the painting's origins. Lydia, with a voice steadier than she felt, addressed him, Lord Radovan. We seek to understand the painting's curse and to find our missing friend. Can you help us? The ghostly figure responded, the creature in the canvas is a tormentor, a collector of souls. It once plagued my village, and in a bid to contain its wrath, we trapped it within the canvas. But confinement only heightened its hunger. Those who gaze upon it with deep emotion become its targets. Claire, tears forming, said, then Adrian. Lord Radovan nodded. He is trapped within the creature's realm. But there's a way to free him. The creature seeks a new soul, a replacement. To save Adrian, another must willingly offer themselves in his stead. Victor, horrified, exclaimed, there must be another way. Lord Radovan looked solemn, time is short. By dawn, he will be lost forever, becoming a permanent part of the canvas. You must decide. As the weight of Lord Radovan's words settled, the gallery's clock began to chime, marking the passage of time. The decision they faced was a dire one, and with each tick, the urgency grew. The ticking of the clock seemed to grow louder with each passing second, its relentless rhythm mirroring the pounding of their hearts. The vast gallery felt constricting, the weight of Lord Radovan's revelation pressing in on them. Victor, lost in thought, paced the cold marble floor. The idea of sacrificing oneself to save another was unthinkable. Yet the thought of losing Adrian, being permanently captured within that grotesque canvas, was equally unbearable. Claire sat on a bench, her face buried in her hands. The emotions of the night had taken a toll. Anguish, fear, desperation, all weaving together, making her feel trapped, just like Adrian. Lydia, ever the researcher, refused to accept the grim options laid before them. There has to be a loophole, a way around this curse, she murmured, scanning her notes. The notes mentioned rituals, ancient rites from the village where the creature had once roamed. There was talk of a mirror ritual where one could confront the trapped souls and potentially free them without a trade. She shared her findings with the group. According to this, a mirror ritual can be performed. It allows a person to enter the canvas realm, confront the creature, and possibly free the trapped souls. Claire looked up, hope in her eyes. Can we do it? Lydia hesitated. It's risky. The ritual demands immense focus, and the tiniest error can lead to dire consequences. But if it works, we could free Adrian without a sacrifice. Victor nodded. It's worth the risk. Let's do it. The ritual required them to place a large, ornate mirror opposite the cursed painting. Candles surrounded the mirror, their flickering flames creating an almost hypnotic effect. Lydia began to chant the incantations, her voice unwavering, the words echoing in a language long forgotten. As she chanted, the mirror's surface began to shimmer, turning from reflective glass to a hazy mist. The cursed painting also transformed, the creature within becoming more animated, its movements fluid and predatory. Whoever wishes to enter the canvas realm must step through the mirror now, Lydia instructed, her voice firm. Victor took a deep breath, the weight of responsibility pressing on him. I'll go. Adrian is my friend, and I won't let him face this alone. With a determined stride, he approached the mirror. As he touched its surface, the mist enveloped him, pulling him through into another realm. The gallery's interior transformed into a dense, misty forest, mirroring the painting's latest backdrop. Back in the real world, Lydia and Claire held their breath, hoping that Victor would succeed, praying that the ancient ritual would be their salvation. Victor felt a rush of cold air as he stepped into the dense, misty forest. Tall, ancient trees surrounded him, their gnarled branches intertwining, forming a canopy that blocked out any light. The ground beneath was soft and damp, muffling his footsteps as he moved. The forest was silent, except for the distant sound of water dripping and the rustling of unseen creatures. Victor's senses heightened, he felt the dampness in the air, smelt the earthy aroma of decay and growth, and heard his own heartbeats echoing in his ears. In the midst of the fog, he could discern faint, shimmering outlines of people. As he drew closer, it became clear these were the souls trapped within the canvas. Their expressions were of sorrow and despair, 
their eyes pleading for release. Among them, he spotted Adrian, his appearance faded, but the recognition in his eyes was undeniable. Adrian, Victor called out, rushing towards him. Adrian's voice was a mere whisper, Victor, you shouldn't have come. The creature, it's too powerful. Victor grasped his friend's arm, feeling its insubstantial form. We're getting out of here. Both of us. Before they could make a move, a sinister growl echoed through the forest. Emerging from the fog was the grotesque creature from the painting. Its eyes glowed a fierce crimson, and it moved with a predatory grace, zeroing in on Victor. Victor, though terrified, stood his ground. He recalled tales of mythical creatures being repelled by acts of courage and selflessness. Drawing a deep breath, he addressed the beast, I'm here willingly, not out of fear. Release these souls. The creature halted, seemingly pondering Victor's words. Its ghastly gaze shifted from Victor to Adrian, then to the myriad of trapped souls surrounding them. As moments stretched, a haunting melody began to resonate throughout the forest. It was Claire's voice, singing an old lullaby from their childhood. The tune wafted through the trees, creating a protective barrier around Victor and Adrian. The creature, affected by the song, began to recede into the depths of the forest, its powerful presence diminishing. Lydia's voice then reached Victor's ears, guiding him, head towards the sound of my voice. The mirror portal remains open. With Adrian's ethereal form in tow, Victor followed Lydia's voice, hoping to find the path back to their world. The forest seemed to come alive, aiding their escape, with trees bending and shifting to forge a clear path. Soon, the shimmering surface of the mirror appeared before them. Without hesitation, Victor and Adrian plunged through it, leaving behind the forest of lost souls. Victor and Adrian stumbled out of the mirror, gasping for breath. The gallery's opulence contrasted sharply with the eerie forest they'd just left. Warm light from the chandeliers above bathed them, and the intricate marble patterns underfoot felt real and grounding. Claire rushed to them, her relief evident. You're back, she exclaimed, pulling them both into a tight embrace. Lydia, face pale from the strain of the ritual, looked at them, relief evident in her eyes. We did it, she whispered. Adrian, still dazed, managed a weak smile. Thanks to all of you. The group shared a moment of respite, celebrating their triumph. The cursed painting, which had held so much power over them, now seemed benign. The grotesque creature was still there, but its eyes lacked the menacing glow. Yet, as the minutes passed, the atmosphere in the gallery began to shift. Shadows deepened, and the temperature dropped noticeably. The candles around the mirror flickered, their flames swaying wildly as if reacting to an unseen force. Lord Radovan, who had been silent till now, broke the growing tension. The creature may be repelled, but the curse remains. The canvas is still a prison, and it seeks occupants. Lydia, ever logical, considered his words, then we must destroy it. Erase its hold on this world. Victor, realizing the gravity of their situation, nodded. We have to act quickly. The group set to work. Claire gathered flammable materials, piling them around the painting. Lydia muttered incantations, ensuring that the fire would consume not just the physical canvas, but the dark magic binding it. Victor, holding a torch, hesitated for a brief moment. The memories of his journey, the trapped souls, and the creature's menacing gaze played in his mind. With newfound determination, he thrust the torch onto the materials, setting them aflame. As the fire caught, the painting began to wail, a mournful, chilling sound that echoed through the gallery. The creature writhed, its form distorting as the flames consumed it. The group watched, holding their collective breaths, as the cursed canvas turned to ash, ensuring that its reign of terror was truly at an end. As dawn broke, the gallery was bathed in a soft, golden hue. The ashen remains of the cursed canvas lay scattered, casting a stark contrast against the opulence of the surrounding artworks. The room, which had been a battleground of emotions and ethereal beings, now felt oddly tranquil. Adrian, now fully restored, stood silently, looking at where the painting once was. It's truly over, he murmured, a weight visibly lifting from his shoulders. Lydia approached him, placing a comforting hand on his arm. Thanks to all of us, especially Victor. Victor, feeling a mixture of exhaustion and elation, managed a weary smile. We faced it together. Claire, always the pragmatic one, started organizing. The gallery will open in a few hours. We should clean up and ensure there's no trace of last night's events. As they started their work, a peculiar thing happened. The ashes from the canvas began to move on their own, 
spiraling into the air, coalescing into forms that looked eerily like the lost souls from the painting's prison. Victor, alarmed, stepped back. What's happening? Lord Radovan, his face grave, whispered, the curse might be broken, but the spirits are still seeking closure. One by one, the spirits approached their loved ones among the gallery members, whispering words of comfort and longing. There were tears, smiles, and heart-wrenching farewells. The air was thick with emotion, every corner echoing with decades, even centuries, of unsaid words. As the sun continued its ascent, the spirits started to fade, their forms turning translucent until they were mere wisps, and then they were gone, leaving behind an overwhelming sense of peace. Victor, Claire, Lydia, and Adrian stood in the middle of the gallery, absorbing the magnitude of what had transpired. Their bond, solidified through shared danger and triumph, was palpable. As the gallery doors opened to the public, life resumed its usual pace. But for those who had witnessed the power of the cursed canvas, the world had shifted slightly on its axis. They had seen the thin line separating reality from the otherworldly, and would carry the memory with them, a testament to their resilience and the enduring nature of the human spirit. And as the final brushstroke of our tale fades into the dark canvas of the night, we hope you carry with you a shiver down your spine and a thirst for more chilling tales. Remember, the line between reality and the unimaginable is finer than a hair's breadth. Thank you for joining us on our scary stories. Until next time, keep the lights on and listen for the whispers in the dark. This is our scary stories signing off for tonight.